Hey guys, today we have a detailed unboxing and review of the Rolex Submariner No Date 114060. That's the one with no date window. And this is the newest version with the ceramic bezel. Obviously this one's already unboxed, but the unboxing is coming up now. Well, here we are for the unboxing of the Rolex Submariner No Date. 114060 with the ceramic bezel. This of course is the outer box. Got the Rolex crown on it. Inside we have the inside Rolex box. This is the small size box. The other outer boxes have a flap here that makes it easier to get the inner box out. In this case I'll just have to dump it upside down to get it out. Let's see what's inside. Well it's a watch but let's see what else is in the box. Here we have the owner's manual. I won't uh, bore you with going through that whole thing, but if you do want to see it, I do have another video, and I'll put a link to that in the description, and you can see page by page the whole booklet. We also have the warranty wallet, which has the warranty booklet in it. Same with that, we don't need to go through it. You can see it in the other video if you want to. i give you this nice wallet to keep this stuff in. Here's the warranty card. This has the model number, which of course is 114060. Has the serial number. And uh, it also will tell you the name of the authorized dealer that originally sold it, name of the person that bought it, and the date that it was purchased. The newer cards uh, from like mid 2020 and beyond uh, do not have the purchaser's name on there anymore. Usually people keep any extra links that they have in the box. There's the Rolex tag. Got their hologram. Usually it comes with one other tag, the retail price tag. It retails for $7,900. This one didn't come with the tag. We bought it pre-owned. Let's take a closer look. Most people think the no date sub is the little brother to the 116610 Submariner with the date. But that's not the case. The no date Submariner actually came out first in 1953. The date version was introduced in 1967. And the current version that we're looking at came out in 2012. The no date is a cleaner and more symmetrical look. The no date sub only comes in black with a black dial and a black bezel. The no date submariner is possibly more rare than the date version. Not necessarily more popular, but there are less on the market. The first thing I think of when it comes to the 114060 is the new Cerachrome bezel. It was developed in 2005 and used on the submariner date version in 2010 and on the no date in 2012. Ceramic is more scratch resistant, doesn't fade, and provides a shinier, more glossy look. The graduations and numerals are coated in platinum. The upside down triangle at 12 o'clock contains a little luminescent pip. This pip is smaller than on other versions and actually fits inside the triangle. While smaller than previous versions, it does stand up taller in the current version. It has a unidirectional rotating bezel. Let's hear that. Nice crisp clicks. Very solid, tight. Feels good. Let's go a little faster. Also new for the 114060 is the Super Case. It still measures 40 millimeter in diameter this way and 44.5 millimeter to the outer edge of the crown. It measures 48 millimeter from the top lug to the bottom lug and 51 millimeter if you include the solid end links. The watch is 12.5 millimeter thick and weighs just over 150 grams. The lug to lug measurement is 20 millimeters. The super case is wider from outer lug to outer lug than the old case. Along with the super case is the maxi dial. 
It has larger markers and thicker hands. There is white gold around the hands and markers to prevent corrosion. The Rolex name is repeatedly engraved on the Rehaut, which is the inner bezel ring. On the left side, the R lines up perfectly with the markers every 5 minutes. At 12 o'clock there's a crown. And on the right side, the X's line up with the markers. This is a great way to tell a fake Rolex from a real Rolex, because the fakes usually don't line up properly. At 6 o'clock, we have the serial number, which is much easier than it used to be when you had to remove the bracelet to see it under the end link. The 114060 uses a new loom called Chromalite. Unlike Luminova or Superluminova, which glows green, Chromalite glows greenish blue. Let me just turn the lights off. I'll just power it up a bit. I made a video on how to charge your loom. I'll put a link in the description if you want to watch it. The Submariner is made with a high grade 904L stainless steel, which Rolex calls oyster steel. All the links are brushed satin finish, which I like better than links that are polished in the center. The bracelet starts at 20 mm at the lugs and then it tapers down to 16 mm at the clasp. And this makes it very comfortable to wear. The Submariner does have high gloss polished finish on the sides of the watch case, the crown itself, the crown guards, the sides of the links, and the sides of the clasp. The clasp uses Rolex's glide lock adjustment system, which is much easier to use than other adjustable clasps. You just click it open, and then you can slide it smaller or larger. When you're done, you just snap it locked again. If you're a diver, you adjust it all the way to the smallest setting and then remove links to size it to your wrist. Then you can slide it all the way open to wear it over your dive suit. Since I don't dive, I just set it to the middle before removing links. That way I have plenty of on-the-fly adjustment if my wrist shrinks in the cold or expands in the heat. There is a full 20 mm of adjustment, which is plenty for any circumstance. This comes in very handy. You see those little screws? Links are added or removed easily with a little micro screwdriver. This is much easier than other link systems, which use push pins and may need to be pressed out. You can easily do this yourself. The plain case back just has some knurling around the edges to make it easier to open. Inside the case is a Rolex in-house 3130 movement. It has a 48 hour power reserve. It has 31 joules and Rolex has been using it in the Submariner since 1999. The Submariner uses a trip lock winding crown, which is watertight when screwed all the way in. You can tell by the little three dots on the crown. This watch is waterproof down to 1,000 feet or 300 meters. Now I'll show you how to set the time on your new Rolex Submariner No Date 114060 watch. First, unscrew the crown counterclockwise until it clicks open. This is considered the first position. Wind it by turning it clockwise 25 to 30 times from this position. This is a hacking movement, which means the second hand will stop when you pull the crown out to the second position. I always like to set the second hand exactly at 12 o'clock. From this position, you can go forward or backward to set the time how you want it. I'm in the habit of only going clockwise because most of the watches I wear have a date. 
Set the time for a minute or two past the actual time and don't push the crown back in. When you push the crown back in, the second hand will start to move again. It's 6.20 right now. So I'm going to set it to 6.21. I use my phone as a reference because it is automatically set to the exact time from the cellular carrier. So it's pretty accurate. Watch your phone and the second the time changes to the time you set your watch to, push the crown in all the way. I did stop that second hand a second or two before the 12 and the reason why I did that is because that's my delay, that's my reaction time from when I see my phone change time to when I actually have to push it in. So it's almost there and there we go. You don't have to worry about screwing it in yet, just make sure the second hand is moving and the time is exactly how you want it. If it is, then you can push the crown and hold it in while you turn it. These tiny parts strip easily, so it's best to start screwing counterclockwise until you feel the threads click into place. Then turn it clockwise to tighten. There we go. Now your watch is set. Well, my watch is set. Well, I thought you might like to see what it looks like on the wrist. If you like to wear your watch over the bone, here's what that looks like. Feels awkward to me. Thought you might like to see what it looks like in a long sleeve shirt. I like that it's not too high profile, like a seed roller, it fits nicely under the shirt. Usually I wear it about like that, just peeking out a little bit. In case you wear it all the way out, there's, there's how that looks. It really is a watch you can dress up or dress down and it still looks nice. Here's what the watch looks like hanging down my arm. This is what the watch looks like in the morning light. I don't usually get up this early guys, I did it just for you. By the way, if you're in the market for a diamond, engagement ring, or high-end luxury watch, give me a call. 312-422-0400. Let's see what time it is. It's about 7.22 a.m. Well, I've got a big day planned ahead with my kids. You're welcome to tag along if you want to see the watch in action. Well guys, if you're still watching, you must have liked the video. And if you did, give it a like. If you want to see more watch unboxings and reviews like this, subscribe and click the bell. If you've got some extra time on your hands, why not watch another one? You can choose one from the playlist that will appear here, 
after I disappear. Or you can just play the next one in the playlist, which will also appear here. See you in the next one.